Illinois women's basketball coach Sean Green, kind enough to join us here on the Illini Inquirer podcast. Illini are nine and two overall, one and one in the Big Ten, with a tough, close loss to number five Indiana a few weeks ago. Some good road wins. And you should go check them out at the State Farm Center this season because they're playing a tough, fun brand of basketball. Shauna, thanks for your time. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Well, people are proud of this Illinois women's basketball program, Shauna, uh, which is credit to you, your staff, and your players. More wins than last season. Uh, I think everybody knows that right now. Um, but what have you learned about your team through the, the first part of this schedule? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh, every day, kind of, you know, I learned more and more and I'm more proud of them, you know, for, from where we came from to, to now, you know, those, I just think back and those first couple of weeks of practices and even the first couple of weeks on the job, um, you know, we've come, a, come a long way. We're not where we want to be, but uh, we've come a long way. And, and I gotta, I gotta, when I look at it from the big picture and, and kind of, you know, not in the moment. Um, I'm like, we have come far. So, but then as a coach, I'm usually in the moment and I'm like, no, we got to get better at this, this, and this. So. Yeah. Understandable, Sean. And I, I know like you don't focus much on the past, but obviously when you take over a program that hasn't won, how do you get them to believe that they can win? Uh, I don't mean to go Ted Lasso on you. I don't know if you're a fan of that, but how, <laughs> how do you get them to just believe that they can win? You know, it's, it's funny because I've, I just never approached it like that. Right. Like I, I know the past, but like when we came in, like in my mind, like, it's just like, this is how we do stuff. This is the process. This is like, it's just, I, I kind of just expected to win, even though I knew it probably wouldn't happen, you know, as quickly as it has, but like, I never, I'm like, Hey, this is, you know, this is what we got to do to, to win games it's like no this is this is just what we do and and this is the brand and this is the process and you got trust in the process and if you want to be a really you know an elite team then it's possession by possession day after day and and this is the standard and I think we just came in with that mindset and then give our players credit for for you know believing in it and 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 working that hard every single day. Shauna, there is a natural tendency to, like you said, like maybe look at the big picture, at least for us. I know we ask about, ask you about it almost every time we talk, but <laughs> do you have to fight it? Like, do you, do you fight any of those moments where you, you zoom out? Is that something you do over a break or is that just strictly into the year thing? You know, usually, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, just by nature, my, my personality, I think I'm very in the moment. I'm not a like long-term, you know, I'm like, okay, how can, we get better today and where are we at right now? But, you know, I think it's something I have, you know, cause you guys ask me it a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I, or with, you know, people, you know, people that have been around the program are like, Hey, just so you know, this is, you know, you really have come far and, and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So I think when people say that, then when I really think about it, I'm like, okay, we have. And, and then I think about, like I said, I, I think about those first couple of weeks of practices. I think about the first couple workouts I had last, you know, whatever that was late March. And, you know, it was, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I thought it, I thought it may take a long time, you know, with some of those, those early days. Um, and, and we have, I told our team this, we haven't done anything yet, right? Like we have not accomplished you know, what we want. So we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. But I also told them, be happy, you know, be happy and proud of what you've done. Like the other day after the Butler game, you know, I came in the locker room and, and you would have thought we lost the game. And I'm like, you guys like, you know, enjoy winning a basketball game. It's really, really hard to win a game. But I also appreciate that they weren't satisfied. They weren't happy because we did do a lot of mistakes, right? And I told them in, in the locker room, that was kind of some of the conversations I'd have with our teams through the past six years at Dayton. Like, you know, they were so used to winning that they wouldn't even really be like, you know, I'd walk in the locker room and they'd find something to be mad about. And I'm like, so I think that's that kind of, it makes you great and it makes you great players. And it, it, as coaches, that's what we want. Um, but I also want them to appreciate and, and really be in the moment and, and, have fun with those wins and enjoy those wins too, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what's important about kind of implementing that winning culture? I know you've talked about it with the transfers. They came from, from programs that have won. How do you get that to permeate through the whole locker room? 
I, I really just think it's expectations and standards and and this is you know this is what it takes i think that um since you know i had one in our staff i think that they trusted us i really do i think that that you know that proven past success i think that they're like okay like we the kids that have, were here right they're like okay we want to win you know we we know you've been there and and i just give them a ton of credit for for trusting that process um and then like I, i've said it you know multiple times with the transfers i just saw you know, obviously Brynn and makaira knew uh just the culture what we do expectation standards and they had been a part of that winning and then i think genesis was big too although not playing a ton, just she's in a winning locker room. She's in a winning culture. She knows what it takes to win championships. And, and I think that that's really important when you're trying to build. Shauna, what have you learned about Illinois since you've taken this job? You've been here almost what, nine months now. Mm -hmm. um, I just really, I appreciate the support. Um, I really, it, it's been, I, I thought we'd have it, but you never know until you're in it. Right. Um, I think that they're hungry for winners. Um, you know, it was funny even after, you know, coming close at Indiana and it's like, you would have thought we, we beat them, right? Like people were, were really excited. And I think it's, I think that's good because uh, they're paying attention right now and, and they are excited and there's positive uh, energy around the program. Um, I still encourage people to get out to state farm center. You know, I, I know our attendance is going up even the other night against Rutgers. Like I, I thought there should, I, I would have liked to see more, but I know it went up a few hundred. So if we can just keep building that, we got to have that. We got to have that fan support. We got to make State Farm Center, you know, a difficult place to play. Um, but I do, I, I feel the support. Our team feels the, the energy. Um, and I think that's been just really, really refreshing for, for me personally and for our team. Yeah, you see all this, you know, on social media and stuff. How, how, what is the importance of getting bodies in State Farm Center for your program, whether it's a team now or future teams? It's absolutely critical, and you guys know that, right? Like, it's it's so important um, just for that atmosphere, and and it's hard. You, I mean, shoot, Indiana's a perfect example. You know, we went there, and and when we were making that run, and we're up in the last two minutes, uh, that place was it was loud in there. You know, and, and it was a huge work, you know, trying to scream over and, and get our play calls in. I mean, that atmosphere and that energy, you know, help them and, and you know, help them get a, a big W. So it's just it's so important. It's so important. And if we really want to you know this program, it's important in recruiting, too. If we want to be taken seriously. Uh, obviously, we got to do our job. And I said that from the beginning. Right. I said, I'm going to do my job of, of putting a a good product out there and I'm going to work my butt off to do that. Now I need your guys's job and the community to come out and, and support us. So if we want to take that next step, we got to, we got to get a really good home court. Shauna, what has this start done for you guys just in conversations? I know you'll be able to get out a little bit more down the road, but just in conversations with recruits on that front to get out to the start, like you guys have. Yeah. Anytime you can, you can win games, you know, I think it's, it's obviously it's huge in recruiting and, and, you know, I think it's open some eyes, um, you know, like, Oh, okay. This is maybe a little bit quicker than, than what they thought, even though, again, we still haven't gotten to what we want. We haven't, you know, won that big, big game yet. Um, and we know that, but it's still better than the alternative. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they won seven games last year. You know, I don't, we want to already won a big 10 game, um, when in a conference game, I don't care how or who or when it is like, it's really big. You gotta, you gotta win those. So, um, the more we can win the, as you guys know, as well, it, it's just going to continue to help us in the recruiting process. And I think, especially, uh, in the, in the state of Illinois. Uh, if we've gone this far, I got to ask you about Makaira. I got a two part uh, about her. What what did it mean for you that she believed in you and your staff so much to, I mean, like, it's not easy transferring, right? And there's a little bit of unknown on the other side for her. What did it mean for you to have that buy-in from her? And why has she been able to make this jump to the Big Ten like she has? Yeah, you know, Makaira, and that's the thing when you look at like recruiting right like when you recruit and, and there's that that relationship there and you know Makaira is just uh she's a 
She's a special kid because of her loyalty. When she trusts you, she trusts you and, and she's loyal to you and she will do anything for you. And we have a you know very good relationship and, and recruiting her and then obviously coaching her for two years. And, you know, there was nothing. It was just like, if you would ask her, she, you know, she said like, wherever you go coach, I'm going. So it wasn't like, you know, it's just, it's that trust within each other. And, and, um, you know, even her, her freshman year when she didn't, she wasn't starting, she wasn't playing as much, you know, she's, she's telling, you know, me, she's telling even her mom, like, Hey, we gotta, you know, try, I trust coach green and I trust this process and I believe in what she's doing. You don't, you don't find that a lot anymore, <laughs> You know, like she just don't. And, and she just, we have, she's just that loyal person. So, you know, when, when I decided to take this job, um, you know, she was the first one. She told me she's coming here no matter, no matter what. And, and then, you know, obviously then we couldn't talk until she got on the transfer portal, but um, you know, she, she's just a really elite player. I knew that I knew when she was at Dayton, she could play it anywhere in the, in the country. I, I said that multiple times. Um, and I think now she's on this big stage and she gets to play against these teams, you know, more than we got to play against this caliber team at Dayton. And, and she's just thriving in the moment. Yeah. Makaira putting up a 20 piece more often than not. Genesis Bryant has been a microwave off the bench, shooting 49% from three averaging 12 points. And then you mentioned Bryn shoe pill follows you from Dayton, giving you four and five in the front court. How important was, is that group to your team right now? Yeah. They've really kind of, I think all just bought into their role. Right. And hopefully, you know, roles aren't constant. They're They're changing. And, and, you know, but, you know, even I think Bryn has gotten, you know, a lot better uh, in her rebounding and her, you know, activity, her defense, uh, she will, the scoring will come, but for right now, I need her to defend and rebound. And, and she's doing that at a high level now, you know, Genesis and Jada coming off the bench, like they could start, you know, we have multiple people that could start, but for them to accept the role, because I love on all our championship teams um, at Dayton, we, we had really good players. Some, some players that should have probably started, that I brought off the bench because I just think it's so important to have that, you know, that, that fuel to the fire coming off and, and that instant um, production off the bench. So having those two guys, you know, just really buy into that has, has been key, has been really key. And then, you know, you have Adalia, you have Kendall, you have Jayla, all those guys just really thriving in their roles. Um, you know, I think that we're starting to feel in, in kind of come to terms with, okay, this is, this is what I need to do in order for us to be successful. Uh, you mentioned Adalia was, it was a big time prospect when, when she signed with this program, she, she's playing like it right now. What stands out to you about what she brings on, on the court and her progress? Just her, her work ethic and, and her, her drive to be the best she can be. You know, she is, she wants to be great and, and she's willing to do whatever we tell her to do. And, and, you know, just, you can't, she may make some mistakes out there, but she works so darn hard. You can't, you can never get mad at her because she, when kids work and they have that, you know, uh, I mean, she just puts everything out there every time she's on the court. So uh, I just think that she's really, you know, we're doing as much as we can to put her in positions to be successful offensively. And then she's done what she needed to do defensively. And now we're saying, Hey, we need you to rebound at a high level. And now she's flying in all over the place you know, getting no boards, getting defensive rebounds and, and just, you know, really playing one. Well. I still think that, that she has room to grow. So she hasn't tapped, you know, tapped out yet on her potential. She's still growing as a player. Johnny, you guys are, are developing an identity on the court and, and there's just a couple of stats that really stand out. Number four in the country, three point percentage, number 10 in rebound margin in the country right now. Um, what's that means more to you? Rebounding. <laughs> Figured. Yeah, de definitely rebounding because that's going to if we rebound at a, at a high level, then we're going to get it more, better threes because a, a lot of those threes and when we were shooting the three really well came out of our transition and, and that doesn't happen if we don't rebound. So um, that's one, though, to tell you the truth, if, if we're looking at, you know, me being honest, if you would have told me we'd be that high in three point field goal percentage, even you know, late going into the fall, you know, in the summer, 
I would have told you you're crazy. I did not think that that we would shoot the ball uh, at that clip. To to be completely honest with you, the the rebounding is a group effort. I mean, because we talked about the the front court and and the the depth there. So to be that high in rebounding, that that's coming from, from everywhere, right? Yeah, and that's what if you're going to be a you know a top fifteen team in, in rebounding, which we've been a top twenty five. You know, the past six years we've been top twenty five in defensive rebounding, uh, and, and you're going to have to do it by by your whole team, and it's not going to be just one person. You know, KB gets you know ten a game, but now this year she's getting some help, and and you know people Adalia and, and our guards, our point guards rebound, and we you know, they rebound at a high level. There's a lot of games Makaira gets, you know, multiple, multiple rebounds and almost double figures. So when it's everyone contributing to that, um, that's when you get those numbers and, and that's when we're going to be at our best, no doubt about it. I have one more about the five returners. Uh, when you got here and obviously you're trying to get to know them and the portal's the portal and, and it's so easy to, to jump in there. How did you kind of massage that transition and, and getting them to believe you. And did you look to anybody to, to say, Hey, have you been in this position? Like, how did you get this buy-in from, from the uh, players who are already there? You know, I'm obviously my first, I think my first day uh, after the press conference, first day in the office, those next two days, I met with every player individually and, and I just listened to them and, and we just talked, you know, and I kind of got to know them a little bit. Again, I've told you guys numerous times, it's not like I watched film or even, looked at stats really I just wanted to get to know them as people and where they were at what they were thinking some of them are already in the portal um so you know and even the ones that were in the portal do you need help with from me anyway to to you know do you have schools you want to go to and and just trying to you know get to know them so met with every single person and then that next week or so you know kind of everything kind of played out of who was leaving who was staying um, and the guys that stayed, you know, from the first, obviously I knew Kendall cause I recruited her mm -hmm. at Dayton. So, um, I, I think she was, you know, all in right away, uh, Adelia, our first meeting. I mean, I, you would have thought we've known each other forever. She's sitting there. We talked for a long time and she told me, you know, everything and, um, you know, Jayla, same thing, just really a great conversation. Um, Gio you know, with someone that obviously with her fifth year um, and, and in master's class, I thought, I'm like, hey, I, I really want you to stay and, and finish here. And and she's been just such a positive, great teammate um, and, and great spirit and energy to her. Um, and then Jada was someone that, you know, was in the portal. She was the one that was in the portal. And I had told her, because again, I had recruited her a little bit, familiar with her. We were actually I don't know if I told you guys this in, in an interview I've mentioned before, we were actually talking with her because um, she was in the portal for, you know, a couple of weeks while we were still playing at Dayton and we were talking to her. Uh, my assistant coach, Ryan, was talking to her while we were still at Dayton and she was in the portal. So it's weird how it all works out. But uh, she was someone in that first meeting. I just said, hey, I would really like you to stay. Um, and then she made that decision to to stay. So. Uh, and, and those are the five that, you know, we all agreed that we're, we're, you know, obviously Kendall and those guys were in the portal. Um, and, and just, again, they bought in from, from the first moment and, and I give them a ton of credit for that. How much did, uh, those conversations when you were at Dayton with Jada matter? Like how, how much do you think that mattered that you had those conversations, that relationship? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's fun. And I wasn't really the one talking because it was in the, it was like a week and we were in the NSA tournament. I was so busy, you know, prepping for that. I wasn't thinking about recruiting or any, anything else. I was thinking about how do we go and beat DePaul and then Georgia. Um, so it, it's just crazy. It's crazy how it all works out. Right. And I think that that's, uh, that's how recruiting is. That's what it's meant to be. You know, like Kendall, I said, I tried Two times I tried to recruit her initially out of high school. And then when she went in the portal uh, or that was before po portal, but when she transferred to Michigan state, you know, we tried to get her and she was, you know, going to Illinois. So uh, it's all meant to be. And, and, you know, hopefully all those things that how they all come together, hopefully it can lead to something really special. John, we want to throw some quick fun hitters at you, but uh, before that Missouri, this Sunday, they're 11 and one you've had road tests already head on the road again for this one. You got Big Ten tests coming up. What what do you want to see out of your team is is these big high major games, Big Ten yeah. games come at you one at one after the other here? 
yeah, you know, obviously we just, we stick to one at a time, trying to find a way to go one and oh. Um, I, we're tested right away out of finals. I don't love the, you know, the timing of this game, but you can't, you can't pick, pick that all the time. So, you know, coming off the of finals, I, I really just want to see our focus and, and how can we go from, you know, being in that finals mode to, okay, we're going on the road to play a team that's receiving votes in the top 25 and is 11 and one. So <laughs> we're going to find out real quickly, how can, how can this team, you know, adapt and, and how can we shift our focus um, from one thing to another? Cause it's going to be a really hard test. Um, and then it's always hard, right? Those couple games before Christmas and you got to try to keep their, their minds locked in and the present and, and be where your feet are, be in the moment and not be thinking about Christmas and seeing your family. Um, Cause Christmas, like I always tell our players leading to these games, Christmas is a lot more fun when you win a couple games going into it. At least I know I usually am miserable when, uh, when, when we lose and then you're going into Christmas break. So <laughs> Right. That's right. Well, Sean, before we let you go, we just want to do some quick hitters with you. Um, I, I imagine every coach is a caffeine addict, uh, given the hours you guys work. So what's, what's the coffee order for Sean Green? Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is my go-to and just hot coffee, cream, and two Splenda. It works. Um, what are you playing in the car on the way to work? I'm, I'm a rap R and B like hip hop person. What's like so the that's where ser my serious is the heat you know, uh, all that stuff. Uh, what is the top food spot for you and your family so far in Champaign-Urbana? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. I would say since we live out this way, we, we go to Jupiter's a lot and Billy Baru's are two of our, our tops just because it's close to the house. It's good picks. Uh, favorite holiday movie? It's funny. We were just talking about this last night with... Uh, mine's probably... Christmas story. Yes. It's, it feels like that's a, that you're either a Christmas story or Christmas vacation one. So I'm, I'm with you. Um, I, I'm with yeah. Christmas. I like, I like them both. I, I like them both. <laughs> well, in honor of bragging rights, last one for you, Shauna, who is your biggest rival in your athletic career, whether it's college, whether it's high school, what was your biggest rival? That's a tough one. <laughs> Cause it kind of changed through every, you know, every school I've been at. Um, I would probably, you know, I'd, I'd go back to just the, the A-10 and my dating days. I mean, we, our St. Louis and VCU games were, were always really, really, you know, deep rivalries and, and some good heated, <laughs> heated contests and, and would always be a game no matter, no matter what the record was, it was going to be a battle. How much does that matter to, to, to build a rivalry, to have rivalries? I think it's great. I love it, you know, and, and that's where it's kind of, it's weird for me right now going into this Missouri game. Cause I know there should be more to it, but I don't feel it yet. Right. And, and I think that's normal. I'm not going to just pretend like it's this big rival on because a true rivalry is something that you feel, you know, like I were going into play at SLU or St. Louis or at VCU, any of those games, like you feel it. And there's like so many emotions in it and backstory of different battles and, and we'll get there. I'll get there. Um, but right now I just don't, you know, I don't have that yet. Cause we haven't, we haven't experienced it. Same thing in the big 10. Like I don't really have those, you know, those feelings yet because it just takes time to have true rivalries. Well, Sean Green, congrats on the early season success. I know you've gotten everybody's attention. It'd be great to see people go out and support this team as well. Thank you for your time and, and good luck moving forward. No, thank you guys. I really appreciate you and all your support for our program it means a lot.